I'm Pakas Kostner. I am Executive Vice President of Def Jam. Cool. So we're talking about Send a Package. Yeah. Let's go into the, the very, very beginning for you. How did you first hear about the program and kind of walk me through uh, how did Universal, how did you get involved in it? I first heard of Send a Package outside of half of my friends being locked up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, through my good friend Hector Baldonado, who is a, a lawyer that we do a lot of work with. Uh, he came uh, and introduced the program to me with the uh, owner, Chris, who actually ended up being a friend of mine now. What were your first thoughts when you when you heard about it? What was the first thing that came to your mind? Uh, the first thing that came to my mind was us being in marketing meetings in Def Jam a couple of years ago, and it was like uh, a big priority for like Jadakiss when we put his album out, and 2 Chains. They were really like adamant about seeing if we can make cassettes. Um, to give to, to obviously the, the, the jail facilities uh, uh, and inmates so they would be able to buy the, the, the product. Uh, it was something that Jadakiss was really big on, 2 Chains was really big on, and then I did a little bit of research, but then like talking to sales and things of that sort, there was really no way, no real way to get distribution and things of that sort into the, the, the jail facilities. So that was happening, those companies were happening before you had met Chris, before you knew Send the Package? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was independent of that? Yeah, it was independent of that. How, that how far did you get before Send the Package in terms of you getting it? Was it more just like an idea and just talking about it, or did you guys actually try to go through with it? Uh, it was an happen? idea, we researched it, but we couldn't figure out a way to get the cassettes manufactured uh, because you know we're so far into the CD and the uh, and the digital age we thought it was just like virtually impossible. Right. So it sounds like for Universal when Send a Package kind of came that was not even just beneficial for Send a Package, beneficial for you guys also because you were looking for a way to do that. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. It was sort of like um, uh, it's like finding a wife, you know, when you're locked up and you find a wife to come marry. You, you know what I mean? It was it was like that marriage made in heaven. <laughs> so tell me what you think, uh, generally, what the value is of Send a Package. What, what do you see as a value and what does it offer that you think wasn't there before? Um, I think the value in Send a Package uh, and what Chris explained to me and, and, and Hector when we met was the fact that a lot of these facilities were being sold bootleg music so we were losing the money anyway you know it was like how could we find a creative way for somebody who can come in manufacture these cassettes for us get our music to inmates and when we could still you know obviously at the end of the day profit from it and, and not lose money to uh to bootlegging and, and those other things how did you go about deciding what titles to, to go in the beginning to uh i think what what we wanted to do was once Hector and Chris, once we got together, met, and then uh, I linked them up with Pat Monaco. First, we called Steve Garley, who had a business affairs, make sure it makes sense. But then, once we got them with Pat Monaco, who is head of our overall sales at UMG, we wanted to, I guess, go with some of the older um, catalog albums uh, just to see how that worked first. Uh, so we did that, and obviously we were uh, successful with it. And then we just picked and choose which songs we felt would, I guess, be um, marketable to inmates. You know, more of our, more of our hip hop uh, artists: Young Jeezy's, the Rick Rosses, the Two Chains, the Jada Kisses, uh, the Fabulouses, things of that sort. Did you have any, so when you're first doing this, getting it off the ground, did you have personally any reservations, Trent Chris is in the room, did you have any reservations or concerns um, about the program or was it something that you knew like right from first minute that this was going to be a success or did you have any reservations about it? Um, well, you always have reservations because I guess when you allow people to not only sell but distribute and, and manufacture your product, there's reservations. Um, the thing that we did our research on and we loved was Send a Package was actually a really professionally run company. Great catalog, um, you know, uh, Chris who owns it and, and represented, came in very professional. Um, uh, and you know, we just looked at it, we did our little research on the side, I called a couple of friends, you know, <laughs> I haven't found out if they were actually clients of Send a Package, I mean, they were and they loved it and they felt like it was really being held from a professional standpoint. So you did your your on the sly editing. Yeah, just, just, just <laughs> or sure. a couple of letters, a couple of kites are sent in. Right. <laughs> what's what's been? How, how long have you? Now, how long has Universal and Tim Pack has been? Is it February? You guys into the deal? Um, I think November. November. Yeah. Well, can you walk me through the chronology of like when you first heard the idea had meanings and kind of walk me through the chronology? Of how it actually. Uh, you know, my job is to find stuff, get my hands involved in things and figure out how we can sell records. That's my job. Uh, I mean, for my part, 
it was really quick because all my job was to do was to just get Chris and Hector straight up into the business legal department and then into sales and then just follow through with them. So I just was there for about three or four meetings and then after that I just put it in their hands because that's what they do. Um, and then I think like maybe a month or two later, uh, Chris was like, yo, things are starting to go in motion and he was like really appreciative and thankful. And I was also appreciative on my part because it was something that we've always wanted to do from a marketing standpoint. So like I said, it made sense. But I think the process went relatively quickly. What's been the most surprising thing since you've linked up? Um, is there anything that maybe you just weren't prepared for or were surprised to see in terms of the reception of it or the manufacturing or any sort of facet of the, of the program? Uh, no, no. I think that process was held more between the sales and, uh, and, and them. I'm just waiting for my Def Jam, Def Jam compilation uh, cassette tape so I can throw it in my old school Camaro and we can have some fun. Let's put that in the blue box. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> So what, and you don't have to talk about this if you don't want, but are you able to get into any of the financials about it in terms of what, uh, how much it costs and what Universal's cut is and, and kind of all that stuff? Or uh, no, that's more of like, yeah, 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 that's okay. more of like I said. No problem. Um, there, what I think is really interesting when I was reading about Sunday Package is that there seems to be a market that has been ignored really for a while. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, in New York, there's tens of thousands of inmates that's potentially your, your demographic, essentially. Um, why do you think inmates have been ignored for so long when it comes to this? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that inmates have been ignored. Uh, I just think, obviously, whatever, whatever the systems that the correctional facilities have, with the wave and change of music, like you know, with CDs and stuff like that, I think that's more their thing. I think they got stuck in the wave of after cassettes were no longer being made. I can only think that cassettes were the safest things for inmates to have in the correctional facility. So I think it was more of what the correctional facilities standards were when it came, comes to like different things that you can accept. You know, there's, there's a bunch of things that get involved with that. So I think once we stopped making cassettes, they just got, they got caught in the midst uh, of time, stagnant. Um, let's talk about the future a little bit. Next, like, let's say, you know, six to 12 months on your end about send the package. Is the idea to uh, more titles, more different genres. Can you kind of walk, walk me through? Like, totally. I mean, I would love to have our whole, uh, you know, every roster of our artists, every catalog album, every new album that we can have. I would love to have it available for inmates. I mean, not only does it help our bottom line when it comes to revenue, but it's also, I don't want to say it's somewhere we'd use to help break new artists and things like that. So right. that's kind of weird. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it all, it all feeds to the bottom line. So, of course, we, have, we would love to. Um, and let's talk about uh, Senate Pack in general. Would you recommend, you know, if, as just a person, would you recommend using the service to, for someone else? Do you find it to be beneficial? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely.